welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Hello my duckies, and this time we'll be having a look at Layers of Fear on PS4. Scary. Phew. This game is very... Not that great. I'm always up for first person survival horror games, I love them. And when Layers of Fear's trailer appeared out of nowhere and surprised the fuck out of me, I was immediately invested. So I got the game, and then I finished the game. And how did I find it? Well... <sighs> This game was a weird one, I must admit. I had no prior knowledge about Layers of Fear whatsoever while it was being made, so the freaky trailers really caught me off guard and got me immediately excited. Luckily, not too much, though, because if I were massively excited for this game, I could tell you I'd be hugely disappointed with it. That's not to say it's an awful game, though. It has a lot going for it. I just wish it did more with what it had. I mean, for starters, the atmosphere is absolutely incredible and it has a fantastic style to it. Being a game about descending into an artist's personal madness, there's a lot here to get sucked into as well as relate to as someone who creates things for others to enjoy. And the way the story is drip fed to you is intriguing and open ended in a good way, not blatantly giving you a cliched bit of writing forced into your face and instead making you ask many questions relevant to the grand scheme of the story that aren't in plain sight. So to get the most out of it, you need to look around and the more you look, the fucking darker a sin that it can get. I really loved how it did that. Also, not to spoil anything, even though I found the ending slightly abrupt, it fit with the themes of the game perfectly and was a horridly dark yet poetic way to end the entire experience. Or at least think you end the experience. I can't say anything more than that. The visual quality overall is brilliant, but it's a shame on PS4 the performance isn't quite great. It does like to chug in many areas which can really suck you out of the moment, especially before certain scares while the game's loading them. And I can also say the same towards the voice acting. It works in some places, but in others it's hilarious. As far as gameplay is concerned, it's not a survival horror game, a more a linear puzzle game with events unfolding around you. And the puzzles themselves, where yes, largely linear and obvious, can sometimes be really imaginative and play around with the theme of the scares really well, with puzzles that make your every move rewind or playback time, and some that require you to find very well hidden codes to ring different phones. Some puzzles though I must call bullshit on, because there are a few that I was stuck on for fucking ages just because I didn't look at a little girl in the far distance at a certain time in a certain way in order to make her move to another location and repeat the process in order to solve the puzzle. Fucking what? But you know what? In a way, it shouldn't make sense. It's a visual and gameplay representation of madness and insanity, and if you look at it solely like that, it does a really good job of that. The disappointing thing though is that the scares are so damn cliched and predictable. It has its moments of unbelievably unsettling and frighteningly creative scares to up your paranoia perfectly, such as tiny details in the background moving or changing when you turn your back, or things in the distance making you glance twice at the incredible sound design scares that make you look in places you probably shouldn't. But the rest of them are just bloody jump scares for literally no reason at all. There are jump scares everywhere in this game, and by the end they become more annoying as they happen without any build-up or point. And there's even a particular scare that I'm not even slightly joking copies PT. Like, exactly, the girl popping in front of you, mangled face right there in front of you, twitching, kills you, throws you to the floor, exactly the same. And Layers of Fear does this twice for no fucking reason. The main problem with this game though is that once you realise you're in no danger at any point because you aren't, the game loses everything it has going for it. It doesn't become scary once you clock that this is just a game about walking inside seeing with a few creative puzzles scattered in it. And there aren't that many sides to be fair other than what's blatantly in front of you to see anyway. And after an hour or so of playtime, you begin to understand that nothing that's actually happening is a threat to you at all. So then every time the game tries to scare you, you never get scared. You know there's no actual danger in front of you. You can get puzzles wrong, but you can never really die and you aren't being stalked or chased. It is a haunted house simulator, a fantastically fun haunted house simulator and very well done compared to some others out there, but it's still just a harmless haunted house simulator with nothing new being brought to the table. I must also say as well that the game for what you get and what you actually do in it was maybe a little bit too expensive, honestly. Nowhere near the levels of the Order 1886, but still maybe a bit too short and a bit too unimpactful for me to recommend at its current price. I'd say give it a look if the price ever goes down. It's worth it for a fun little dark story with an odd splash of creativity, but if you're looking to be terrified, this might not do it for you if you ask me. So, I think I could give this game a 4 out of 10 at its current price. I might rate it a little bit higher if the price ever does go down. Phew. Ay, 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 ay.